Welcome to HCC TV's Food Without Borders. I'm Todd Duplantis, your host. You know, Houston has so many international flavors within our city. Each week we hope to bring a chef home to you to where you can see them create their signature dishes uh, from restaurants around Houston. That's where we'll normally be doing this show, but this, today we're taking place, uh, taking part in uh, the HCC TV studios to kind of get our uh, get our feet wet. Joining me now is Rourke McGaffin. Rourke, you and I have known each other for many years, but Long time. one thing I didn't know is you have a food website and you're a bit of a foodie yourself. Tell us about Definitely. what we're going to be doing here today. Uh, well, we're going to be uh Primarily, we're going to be posting or poaching a salmon, uh, poaching it with uh, lemon, lime. Also, we're using um, some rice wine vinegar, equal parts with vermouth. And the reason we're using both is it just gets a little pricey using straight vermouth. And you can get this rice wine vinegar at 99 Ranch Market. Oh, Real it's cheap. a great place to go. You want to watch it. it on Saturdays though, because you yeah. won't be able to get a parking spot. It's true. Incredible it's true. place. But yeah, it's like it's my favorite grocery store. Absolutely. I love it. And so this is a great deal. It's only a couple of dollars. And uh, I noticed you got a lot of fresh spices here. You got some mm -hmm. fresh stuff, but also some dried spices. Tell us a bit about what you're going to use those for. Certainly, the, these are. Uh, it's part of the poaching. It's uh, bay leaves and star anise. And, Which uh, is very traditional in Asian cooking, it seems like, with, right. the, with, the, with the anise. Mm -hmm, definitely, and it gets the, the flavor of fennel. You can mm -hmm. also use fresh fennel. I didn't get any, so we're taking a shortcut and using the star anise. And some bay leaves with the uh, lemon and lime, uh, equal parts. Uh, two cups of water with uh, a cup of the rice wine and a cup of the dry vermouth. And we're going to make a sauce with that. Uh, there's also going to be fresh dill in the poaching. And then we're going to do a sauce with, uh, it's Greek yogurt, low-fat Greek yogurt with uh, fresh dill and chive. And the, and the Greek yogurt, the thing is, I guess it's just, about, besides being packed with protein, it's just very, very, um, it's, it's very thick. Mm -hmm, definitely. It's, thick it's the way they prepare mm -hmm. it. And uh, it comes out creamy like sour cream. I love the texture. And uh, we're going to add a little Dijon mustard to it fresh dill and chive, mm -hmm. and just a, a real small bit of uh, red chili paste as well. So this is kind of Asian inspired, the, uh, the poaching it's got of the salmon. Asian yeah, fusion, Asian right, exactly, right. And uh, served with that, we're going to do, it's, uh, it would be a vegan cream spinach, except for we're gonna add a little Parmesan at the end. And uh, I use chopped, fresh, frozen spinach. It's really easy, you don't have to mess with all the, the cleaning and chopping, fresh lemon, uh, diced onion with garlic that Let's we're going to sweat. Coconut milk as well. Right, and this mm -hmm. makes the dish. Instead of using heavy cream, mm -hmm. I use coconut milk, which is just as rich. Doesn't have all the all the fat content, I guess. Right. Well, it does have the fat content, and it's just as many uh, calories, but there's no animal products. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, except for the Parmesan we'll be adding. And are you going to saute this, these? Uh... We're going to do a mushroom saute okay. with a uh, real simple one with garlic and also the uh, fresh thyme, a uh, little coarse salt. It's going to be done in olive oil. And at the end, we're going to add a little pat of butter. Now, uh, one thing I use at home is I use a lot of dried, uh, dried spices, but I'm noticing mm -hmm. you're bringing a lot of fresh stuff here. There's really not a whole lot. There's a big difference between the two. There's no comparison, right. I should say. Right. You know, there's certi certain dry herbs that I just don't like at all. Right. And uh, dill is one of them. I'm not, I'm not crazy about dry dill. I can get away with using uh, dried chives. Right. They reconstitute well. Time, I can go either way. I much prefer the fresh, but I'm not feeling like I'm suffering if I'm using dried thyme. Uh, same with rosemary. Rosemary's great fresh, but it can be used dry as well. And all of these ingredients, uh, a lot of them you can get at Ranch 99. I know I've mm -hmm. seen this at uh, regular grocery stores. The, the, the fresh herbs as mm -hmm. well, they have great fresh herbs. They have great deals on produce there. Um, the onions and garlic, ginger, definitely. Salmon itself, I noticed if you go to a uh, where they have fresh seafood, you're going to notice like three different types of salmon. What's the, the difference in the taste in using this type of salmon that That's you got here? That's a great question. This is sockeye salmon, mm -hmm. and I bought it frozen, vacuum sealed, and that's how you want to buy right. your salmon. 
Uh, when you go to a grocery store and you see salmon displayed right, yeah. like it's fresh, it's not fresh. It's always pre-frozen. They yeah, just yeah, defrosted yeah, it. Yeah. If, you, if you're buying fresh fish, there's good fresh fish to buy in Houston, but they're not flying salmon in from right. up north every day fresh. So the pre-packaged so, um, wild caught, wild -caught sockeye I like sockeye. Salmon. Sockeye has that really deep color to it and it's very rich. And salmon's always tricky with me because it reaches that point where you can overcook it very quickly. Definitely. You know, so it's got to be perfect with doing that. So how right. long are you going to cook that for? This is going to go about eight minutes. Okay. And um, just to make it fit in the pan, we're going to lop off the end here and probably use that for a little sashimi. And you've got off gonna, camera. And all this is going to go into the. Uh, this goes the, in the bottom. In the bottom. Uh, it's going to hold the salmon up okay. and add flavor, of course. And we're going to throw a couple slices on top as well. And then in the bottom, the poaching liquid is the 50/50 uh, wine to water. In about eight minutes. Right. Once this heats up, we place the salmon in, mm -hmm. put the top on, leave it alone for eight minutes, and uh, it'll be good to go. We'll plate it. And, have the sauce that we'll make for it. Well, we've got a great meal here. We're going to show you how to put all these ingredients together. We'll save the salmon for last. When we come back, we're going to take a look at some of the other ingredients that are composed into the side dishes with the mushroom and the spinach. So stay tuned for Food Without Borders. We'll be right back. Learn here. Train here. Improve here. Start here, go anywhere. Register today at hccs.edu. Welcome back to Food Without Borders. We've got some poached salmon we're going to be cooking up in a few moments, but first we're going to talk about the side dishes and get them underway. Rourke, Rourke McAffin is here with me. Rourke, tell me about the first side dish we got. I know you got some spinach and some, uh, also some mushrooms. Right, we're going to start with the mushrooms. And, uh, but while the mushrooms are cooking, we're also going to saute the onions because okay. they need to be sauteed for the spinach before, they can, before we can start the spinach. All right. But to start, the very first thing I'm going to do is start to heat the uh, poaching liquid for the salmon. And once again, the liquid, you've got rice wine vinegar, also some vermouth. Right, done half and half. It's a cup of each. Okay. We have mixed. And then two cups of water. Two cups of water. So four so, cups altogether. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and this, this is piece of salmon is about how large is this? About a pound and a half? Uh, I think it's close to two pounds. Two pounds? Okay. Yeah. I didn't, you know what? Honestly, I didn't even look. But I, I know from the price, it was probably about two pounds. Now, I know you have a website where you actually teach people these recipes. Right. And, and tell me a bit. I, in fact, I saw one of your, your, your recipes on there. You posted it in social media a couple of weeks mm -hmm. back. But tell me about what inspired you to do that. Well, I was really interested in being able to use uh, my computer for more than email. And so uh, <laughs> so I got start a cooking website. Right, Why not? right. And uh, so I figured that was, you know, just a way to be artistic without paintbrushes and, mm -hmm. and guitars. And I figured I could cook and, and make good videos and of easy recipes, things that might seem right. intimidating, but are really, really easy to do. And some of your dishes are vegan inspired, but you're not mm -hmm. a full vegan yourself, No, are you? not at all. I like to eat everything, mm -hmm. but I do, you know, uh, like Meatless Mondays. Right, and right, right. I, I, can re I really enjoy a good vegetarian vegan dish right, when sure. it's done well. And this here is vegan friendly, you said, or pretty much? It is, yes. It's going to be vegan friendly okay. till the very end, and then it's optional whether you want to use shredded Parmesan, okay. and we're, we're going to use that. All right. Let's get started with the, uh, the spinach, I guess. So right Right, we're heating the, uh, well, we're going to start with the mushrooms okay. and the onions for the spinach, okay. and we're heating the, the poaching liquid. So I am going to put the lemons and limes. And those are going to be on the bottom, right? Right. Okay. They kind of suspend the salmon a little bit. We're probably going to add some more before we put the salmon in. Now, is this a dish you had at a restaurant in town or something that you want, that you found no, online? No, it's me just, uh, I came up with it. I knew, you know, mm -hmm. the basics. Right. It's all the same. It's kind of like frying an egg. Uh, right. But so you then you could come up with your own way. But certain things are constants. Of course, you have to have water. Some people use vinegar. I like to use wine because mm -hmm. it's not as tangy. Right. And uh, the bay leaves, they just add a great flavor to everything, I think. Yeah, bay leaves is also very... Uh, in the cooking, I grew up in Louisiana. It seemed like everything right. down there, you're putting bay leaves, and garlic. you put them in your gumbo, bay yeah. leaves, garlic, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, and so, red beans and rice, you got a lot of that in there. Exactly, definitely. I am going to, that's heating up. So we got that going. And you know what? I am going to start the onions in there. Oh, if you'd like to chop the yep. other 
half that onion. You might now here's have a funky better looking knife. This. What do we got going with those this? Those are better for herbs. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see this, but right, it's an interesting type of knife. Yeah, they they definitely work well with the with okay. herbs. Okay, my so, best. You want a rough chop on these? Uh, as fine as you can do on that okay. little board. And you know what? I got this backwards. The poaching actually does much better in this pan. So. So we're making a little change. Right. Midway I'm going to do the problem. mushrooms in my iron skillet. Now, one thing you did mention is if you're doing these recipes at home, there are variations you can make on it. I imagine you could put different spices in there. Definitely. You probably could use a different type of liquor or a different type of, uh, if you didn't want to use liquor, you could just use, uh, you said vinegar or something like that. Right, uh, right. Some people use a little vinegar. They like yep. the flavor of that vinegar. And I, myself, I just, I like wine and I like vermouth. When mm -hmm. I cook with wine, I like to cook with vermouth because I really like the flavor. It's always consistent. Right. With wine, it can be a little bit different every time. And as we mentioned earlier, cooking the uh, cooking the, the salmon, which we're going to do in a, few, in a little while, mm -hmm. very tricky because you reach that point, and I've done this many times, where right. it's, you know, a minute or two, and then you, you've you lost the salmon. You know, it turns mm -hmm. into something gummy and mushy or gummy one way or another. Right, and, and I'd rather take it off a little undercooked right, than, right. than take the chance of overcooking. Absolutely. Because it's still going to cook on the plate, and poached salmon you want just done. Yeah. And I, I don't mind it a little underdone in the middle, but I, I we're going to get this cooked all the way through. Well, I've never had poached. So this will be an interesting right. thing for Fantastic. me. I've had grilled salmon, baked salmon, but never poached. Great. And so we're going to get these onions started. I'm going to quit picking them up without a pot on there. All right. You mean to walk over there and get those in there? Certainly. Get uh, those. You got it. And you definitely want to hear that that sound right when you put them in there otherwise right. the pot's not warm enough and, and another thing too is you know you really want to heat up the pan mm -hmm. before you put in the oil uh, you want the oil to go in right before uh, you put in whatever you're going to cook all right so we got that going you're going to get those sweating down right and those we don't have to pay attention to too much though i am going to turn it down a bit Oh, what do you think, two or three down. minutes on those I onions? See. Is that what's best uh, to sweat them down? Right, we're going to do it till they're brown. Okay. As a matter of fact, let me get the spatula. When I can do that while sure. you're doing the next thing. Sure. Um, so we got this pretty warm. Now I've and heard some, when you're doing this with onions, I've heard put the salt in now or wait? I don't. I don't salt them actually. Okay, really? Okay. I mean, sometimes I do, but I like to salt things at the end. I got you. All right. You know, it just seems salt builds up uh, so many ways in a dish, so I use it very sparingly. Okay. Though we are going to use salt today. And if you don't mind moving that oil around yep. a little bit there. And you want the, for the mushrooms, you want the pan good and hot because uh, we want to, we want to brown the sides of the mushrooms. And also these mushrooms, you can see the caps are still attached to the stem, which is how you want to buy mushrooms. They want to be mostly white. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't, you don't want a lot of gills. That's what you're trying not to get. Um, a little bit is OK. Now, which one, what, are those baby bellas, or which ones are those? No, these are just regular button mushrooms, okay. um, medium-sized button mushrooms. But uh, yeah, they're great. Domestic mushrooms are great for sauteing. So I haven't used this before, so I'm going to throw in one. No, we're not hot enough yet, no, so we're going to crank that up a little bit. This one, is that right? Should be that one. There we go. All right. Okay. So we'll let that set a minute. And let me get that other pot for the spinach. Now the mushrooms are gonna, they're sauteed and they're gonna have a sauce on them or what exactly are we gonna do? No, uh, at the very end, near the end, we're gonna add the garlic that uh, we have cured in olive oil. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to, right at the end, when we're turning off the stove, the stove top, we're gonna add the butter. Just okay. so it melts just okay. a little bit. You don't want it to melt too much. Yeah. Is it warmer? It just, well. Try the other side and we'll see if that works. Okay. I think that, oh, I see. That's for the whole burn. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. 
So once it starts going, we'll hear it. And we'll put the rest of the mushrooms in there. And we're probably only gonna do about half the mushrooms because you don't wanna crowd them to get that uh, nice caramelization on the side. I mean, you can do right. more like a stewed method where you put a whole bunch of mushrooms and kind of cook them down. Well, we're gonna take but a look more closer at these mushrooms when we return. We've got uh, some mushrooms going, we've got our spinach going, and then the, uh, poached, the poached salmon, which we'll end this meal with. Food Without Borders coming up right away. We'll see you in a few minutes. Learn here, train here, improve here. Start here, go anywhere. Register today at hccs.edu. Welcome back to Food Without Borders. We're here with Rourke McGaffin and we've got a great meal going on. We've got some poached salmon, uh, some onions that are uh, sweating right now. We're getting ready to toss in some uh, button mushrooms and then also some spinach. So let's go ahead and get the mushrooms going here, Rourke. Fantastic, you see we're smoking right here on the pan. We Get want it nice and hot. Okay. And that is pretty darn hot with that pan. Yes, it is. Now, you said you're, these are just plain button mushrooms. You're right. Garden variety mushrooms. But you want to make sure that there, there's, there, a, you, see, you said specifically no gills in white. Make sure they're clean and Right. Uh, mushrooms, they go from growing mm -hmm. and then they want to fruit. They want to, they want to spread the spores. Right. So once they stop growing, the caps bust off the stems, you can see the gills get really yep. thick and the spores start to drop and you don't want any of that. Okay. So it, as you can see too, I only put half these mushrooms in. This was a pound, so an eight ounce pack is perfect in a 12 ounce skillet. As I said, you could stew them and you could do the whole pan and just mm -hmm. cook them down, but we want to You want to give a nice size, brown color to right, them, right? Caramelized. Right. And while they're at that stage, we're going to take the fresh thyme, uh, all but one couple little sprigs we're going to throw on at the end okay. and we're going to put that right in there and whatever thyme leaves fall off is great but we're going to pull those sticks out at the end. Now as I mentioned before you know I don't have a lot of fresh uh, uh, spices in my house but if you grab thyme or something like that I've always rubbed them in my hand. That's a good get, way to do it You know too. at least get the most out of them to get the most out of the flavor though. Right right that works fantastic and also I love to make soup stock so mm -hmm. things like that when you have the leftover stems I love throw to throw them in soup stock. And, right sure. right exactly. So I imagine so, when, you're, when you're buying salmon or anything like that, it comes with bones, you save that for uh, fish stock? You uh, exactly, yeah. I do. Uh, and sometimes I go just to buy the fish heads. I go to some of the Vietnamese yeah. supermarkets. They get great fresh fish. As you can see, that's caramelized. Well, that really is pretty nice. Cool. Yeah. So we're going to turn this down. That's actually pretty hot, which is good. We want it hot. We're going to let that cook a little more. Uh, the onions are doing good. We're going to cook. Uh, we're going to turn this uh, pot on. This is going to be for our spinach. Okay. And it's going to start out with a little garlic once it warms up. Then we're going to add uh, the chopped spinach, the onions, and the coconut milk and the squeeze of lemon all at once and let it simmer for about seven to ten minutes. And then the last thing we're going to do is. And this uh, is put frozen spinach on. that you're using, by the way, right? right? It's yeah, chopped it's easy frozen enough. Spinach. Yeah. Right. This is, uh, you want three boxes for a 14 ounce can. Okay. Uh, this is 13 and a half ounce. For a can ounce. of coconut milk. Right. So three boxes or three bags. The bags are 12 ounces, mm -hmm. the boxes are 10. Those six ounces don't matter either way. It comes out perfect, whether it's 30 ounces or 36 ounces of spinach. So, we're doing good here on the mushrooms. I'm going to turn this completely off. One thing about using those cast iron skillets, they get pretty hot pretty they quickly. They stay hot, and yeah. I like how they do it, because then if you time it right, yep. you just turn it off, and it's going to cook the rest of the way right. in the pan while it cools down. And once it cools a little bit more, you stir that garlic in. And now we're going to, it's near the end, so we're going to add the salt. I always like the salt near the end. And you can this really smell that those aromas coming out here with the garlic and the, salt. Mm -hmm. and the spice. Right. So that's just about done, but the pan's a little too hot. You don't want to add the butter too early because it's going to separate. Okay. You, you still want it nice and creamy at the end. So we're going to get this a little warmer. And you know what? We can go ahead. Our uh, liquid, we started heating earlier, so it's and once really again, that liquid's got vermouth. Equal parts vermouth and rice wine vinegar and then water, correct? Right. Okay. So it's a, a two cups of wine to okay. two cups of water. And you don't salt it, you just add your spices no. and put it in like I that. I don't salt seafood. Yeah. 
Okay. I, I don't salt seafood from the ocean. I mean, I'll salt right. freshwater right. trout, but you know, salmon, shrimp, I just don't think you have to salt it. Do you eat a lot of sushi? I love sushi. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Things, I remember yeah. the days when there was only Miyako's. Yeah, yeah. Now yeah. there's so many places to go. So like I said, this is a little big for our pan, so I'm going to lop off a bit of this. And did you did it come with the uh, skin on, or do you? It does, skin? and I leave the skin on. And you know what? I should have checked this for pin bones. And actually, sometimes you have a few stray bones in there. You definitely right. Want to watch I out think for we're good. I think we're good on that. Okay. And we're going to lay this right in. Turn it up a little more. Let me get my spoon here. We want to get some of this liquid on top. Is there a favorite place in Houston that you go specifically for, besides the obvious, that you go for the seafood? Uh, yeah, I love good company seafood. Right. I love Papa Do's. Right, right. And uh, actually, it's not lit. We were talking about one thing that I like with seafood is I those those places are always ones you can count on because they have good stuff. Mm -hmm. But I like going to the you know the the smaller Italian restaurants and right. getting their seafood. You know we talked about Michelangelo's. It makes some great sea bass over there. Definitely. And then some of these other restaurants, the smaller Italian ones, they seem to have the fresher fish you know than other places. They really do. Mm -hmm. The Japanese know. and the Italian restaurants. Exactly. Yeah. There's a place called Ginza that I love that's on San Felipe. Mm -hmm. It's a little mom and pop right. sushi house and it's just it's a little tiny are, oh, place yeah. but it's fantastic. The and it's funny. It, sushi and 20 years ago we were just talking about one sushi place in town. You right. know, really, <laughs> it's just exploded in the last two decades in the Houston area. Right. Uh, I even like the Choo Choo sushi place. That place is fantastic. So we're I think warm enough Okay. On here to where we can get the garlic going. I'm going to turn it up a little more. Hopefully, we can get it to sizzle. So, are you going to add this in there next? Right. You can actually throw that right in. Okay. Because we're going to put these in here, get it all going, and then we're going to probably go take a break. So, let's Sounds uh, good. put that in there. And you just let that cook down, or do you need to put um, the coconut milk in yet? We're going to put in the coconut milk and we're going to put in the onions. Okay. So, we'll go ahead and add that here. And, you and uh, also, we're going to squeeze a lemon in there, but okay. let me get a, I got a little sieve we can squeeze it through right over okay. here. Why does this smell incredible? Oh. It really does. All right. There you you know. can have the honors Certainly. of that there. And one thing wh I forgot to mention before we did this, you want to squeeze out all the liquid you can out of the spinach. Okay. You want to press it through either a bigger sieve like this or a uh, larger one. Right. Well, I also have it's it's called a a chinois or a soup strainer. See, I was hoping we were going to get that on camera. Right. This thing's incredible. <laughs> and I should have shown yeah. that, but I, I we uh, I got in a hurry and well, we got our food going here. We're going to go ahead and we got our poached salmon, our, our mushrooms going. We're going to do the sauce and uh, get the spinach ready and serve it up in the next segment. Stay tuned to Food Without Borders. HCC's interior design program offers the technical, creative, and business training needed for an interior design career in as little as two years. Benefits include affordable tuition, instructors with industry experience, small class size, and the latest in technology. HCC prepares students for a career earning a competitive salary after graduation. For more information, visit hccs.edu. HCC, start here, train here, go anywhere. Welcome back to Food Without Borders. We're in HCC TV studios at our set for Food Without Borders. We're going to be taking the show out on the road. We're going to be at lots of different restaurants around it's the city be exciting. and yeah. letting folks know how to make signature dishes. Rourke McGaffin, our celebrity chef here with us today. You're going to be doing a segment on Food Without Borders in the future where you'll be making uh, dishes with our students here. At right. HCC. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Right. We're going to do some real, you know, basic dishes, just things that are quick and easy, cool. traditional. So this will be your set in here. I can't wait. <laughs> Looking forward to it. We've got some uh, poached salmon. We've got some sa some uh, mushrooms, and then also the spinach. Uh, looks right, incredible the spinach there. is simmering. It's just about done. The mushrooms. We really should have added this a little earlier, but I think the pan is still warm enough. We're just going to let a little of that butter melt down. Mm -hmm. And those will be just served on the side. 
Uh, right, exactly. Okay. It's going to be one of the side dishes. Okay. We got that, uh, and I didn't we'll do anything for carbs, way. so I, I just uh, brought the pita bread from uh, Phoenicia. So this is simmering. Uh, it's nice and bubbly. It's been going about seven or eight minutes. And once again, that's got coconut milk, frozen spinach, a couple of packages, or three packages. It's three uh, packages. Mm -hmm. got some caramelized onions and some lemon juice, that's about it. And, and the garlic, right, and the garlic, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's very simple dishes. All these dishes are very simple. If you think about it, this is a half hour show and we pretty much prepared all these exactly. on camera. Right. So you could make this for your family within half an hour for dinner time, get right. all the ingredients together. And one last thing, I like to salt at the end, so we're gonna add the salt. A little in uh, the mix, and then we're going to go a little on top at the end. Okay. So we got the. I'll do that if you want to get started with this okay. um, sauce. Okay. That's going to go in okay. right there, and our sauce. In. We are going to go the uh, Greek yogurt. We're going to go just a tiny bit. It's like a half a teaspoon of Dijon mustard, mm -hmm. and. Also, very simple sauce. A tiny bit of uh, the chili and a lemon zest. We're doing the zest because if you use the juice, it breaks down the uh, the yogurt. It's going to separate. But if you okay. use the zest, you get that fantastic lemon uh, flavor without affecting the yogurt. And then zest will go right in the sauce. Stir that up as well. for me. Yeah. It's going to go right. It's going to go right in the sauce. It's so we got Greek yogurt, a little bit of sriracha, and then uh, some uh, Dijon. chili paste. Yeah, yeah. And Dijon, and then uh, the very last thing we're going to cut up a little chive. And I imagine you could make this sauce up ahead of time. You do the dish uh, it's true though, um, fresh herbs, I like to cut them Maybe right before the you're going to use them. Right, yeah, you exactly. You can do the, the uh, yogurt and the, the wet items and then just put the, the herbs in right before you mm -hmm. serve it. Yeah, it really releases the flavor. And you've got some dill and looks like just chives in this one. Huh? Dill, exactly. Dill, chive, lemon zest, little chili paste, Dijon mustard, and the Greek yogurt. So this is going to be on the side, just in case somebody wants that with your salmon. So we poach salmon. That salmon looks incredible. Oh, fantastic. And the smell of it is just incredible as well. And the Is cheese going on top of here? It does go on top of there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Parmesan cheese? Exactly. And the sauteed mushrooms. All right, I'm going to plant those out there. So we've got our poached salmon. You've got some uh, some mushroom here, or actually some mushrooms that have been caramelized, and then also this uh, spinach that looks incredible with some uh, cream coconut spinach. milk. Cream exactly. spinach, exactly. Looks mm -hmm. incredible. Well, we made it through the first episode of Food at Borders, and we didn't burn the place down. So that's Fantastic. always a good day yeah. when you don't have that happen. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and have something to eat here. If you want any information on Food Without Borders or how to get a hold of Rourke and check out his recipes, you can go to hccs.edu slash foodwithoutborders. For Food Without Borders, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. I'm Todd Duplantis. Mm -hmm.